of those classes where nobody does their work. You set it, you put it on the board, you set it in an announcement, you send it in the Remind app, you send it through WhatsApp. You set it and you told the kids more than once, but just no one is turning in work. Is it you, is it them, is it a combination? What do you do to get kids to turn in more assignments so they can, you know, Past the school year. I got four ideas that are gonna help you to get more work out of your students and actually get better work as well. Let's go. I'm gonna say on the front end that of all the teachers I've observed over the years, all the classes I've said and all the people that I've met, this tends to happen to just about everyone. There might be like one or two unicorns out there and people act like they don't have this problem, but they do. I mean, I've had this problem infinite numbers of times and so I've created a classroom where it happens less but there are always going to be students that aren't handing in work and, and sometimes whole periods that aren't handing in work. And then you just have all these zeros and you're kind of like racking your brain as to what you should do. Because again, this, this like makes you feel like this, it reflects poorly on you, right? Someone's going to see your grade book and go, why are there all these blank spaces? Why are there all these zeros in your grade book? And so I, these are four really simple ideas that, transform my classroom and I hope they're going to transform yours. So the first idea here is to build urgency. There's a lot of ways you can do this. We just talked about this in our last workshop about policies and procedures and rhythms. But this idea of building urgency means kids typically aren't doing work because they don't have to, because they know that you'll accept it whenever. They know that they have the whole class period or they have until the end of the quarter or they'll just do it tomorrow, right? It's This is, happens like when we have kids do homework over the weekends, they tell themselves on Friday that they'll do it as soon as they get home, but then their friends are on the game and then they will do it Saturday. So I'm just going to chill with my friends tonight, but then they stay up till three o'clock in the morning playing video games. They don't get the work done. So they're going to do it Saturday night. Then they swear they're going to do it Sunday, but then the Eagles game comes on on Sunday because everybody's watching the Eagles. E -A -G -L -E -S, Eagles. Maybe that's not true, but anyway, they're watching the football game on Sunday. And so now they put it off till Sunday night. Then they start freaking out. Then they're just like, I'll just cheat for my friend on Monday on the bus ride to school. And then I won't have to worry about it but they just don't do it and so building urgency is creating a reason for you to get it done early so that could be a lot of things i've talked about this in other workshops but i had a club called the lack of procrastination club where i actually gave kids extra credit for getting it in before the due date it was like a 10 percent raise in your grade but i had kids with extremely high grades in class and it seriously offset their testing grades by just handing in work early. It might be using a timer in your classroom. It might be celebrating kids that publicly that are creating it on time. It could also be something as simple as having a sticker chart in your classroom. Even for older kids, this works. I've used it in high school where I have a sticker chart where as soon as people are done, it's going up there. The other thing is, this is why I don't allow late work in my class. And your school might have a late work policy, but it's really pushing and talking to your school about there needs to be a parameter because once kids have so much work and they've let it go so far, what we're doing is a disservice to children because we're telling them they can make it up, but they really can't. There's no physical way or possible way for them to get all that work done. And when you're doing all that makeup work, the big pile of makeup work at the end of the quarter, are you really learning anything anyway? No, you're just getting work in to get work in. So it's somehow, some way building urgency so that kids see a reason to get it done now. In almost 20 years in the classroom, I have made more mistakes than I care to admit and really would like to own up to. Little mistakes that just like wasted a lot of my time and took time away from my family and other big mistakes that have really caused me to lose my cool in front of my class. I would hate for you to have to learn from your own experience instead of learning from mine. And that's why I created the Classroom Management 104 Common Mistakes and Pitfalls Workshop, where I'm going to walk you through a whole bunch of issues that all teachers deal with and the answers that I figured out to, you know, minimize your ability to have to deal with it. Can't be there live. It's cool. We're going to send you the recording anyway. We priced it for teachers at only 39 bucks. And this is the last workshop we're having of this school year. If you want to make the rest of the year, your best of the year, click the link below, sign up now, and we'll see you there. Peace. Second thing I think is important to consider is this idea of, are you giving too much work? So I know I have been guilty of this in the past. I hear other English teachers say that, oh, yeah, I give my kids 20, 30, 50 pages to read a night of the book. And then I'm looking at my students and they're like, they won't even read two pages. So can I shift this 
so that I'm giving students an appropriate amount of work. This is part of the reason I do not do homework unless class goes over and we have something to just finish up. Now, this is excluding things like test prep, studying for quizzes, studying for tests, things of that nature. But I do not give reading homework. I don't give writing homework at home. And so everything we do in class gets done in class. But even that is chunked. Now, look, I give anywhere from five to six grades a week. And that goes from participation to classwork to tests five or six every single week that are five out of the six of those are in the grade book by Friday. I'm going to talk about the importance of that in a second, but questioning yourself as this, like, are you giving your students too much? Not what does the school think? Not what does your team think? Not what did you do when you were in school? But is it too much for the students that are in your class? And the last thing I want to say about this is that sometimes if you really think about it, Teachers give more work as the reward for getting your work done. So everyone's done and you go, oh, jump on and do a mathia, jump on and do an extra reading assignment or something like that where we're just piling it on. Now, kids that were done, kids that did do it in time are now just being rewarded with more work that just mounds up and becomes too much for them. Number three, not everyone likes this one, but I'm gonna share it anyway. I found that grading faster helps. If I want more students to do work and I minimum, like I get the work down to a sizable amount and I can put more grades in quicker, what that's going to do is help students to see that they're, that they're missing an assignment. If I'm grading things a week or two later and finally getting them in, then this becomes a problem because then kids don't know that they missed or they can't remember what they did two weeks ago. But I mean, honestly, I couldn't tell you an assignment that I gave two weeks before I where we were at any given point in the year because I, I'm not holding on to that information. Some ways to grade faster are looking at things like grading apps that you can use. You can scan a paper and it's gonna work. It's having students grade their own work or having each other's work. And sometimes this works not, I don't have the whole class take time up to grade everyone's papers, but I'll take, pick one or two trustworthy students or one of my teaching assistants to grade stuff for me so that I'm not spending time doing that. I also grade for less things. So if I'm grading essays even, there's only a handful of things I'm grading in there. I'm not looking for transition sentences and punctuation and capitalization and making sure that you're using the dreaded B verb correctly. I'm not looking for all the things. I let students know on the front end, these are the things I'm looking for. And then those build over the course of a year, but I'm grading for less things on each assignment. Can I ask less questions or am I just giving 30 questions because I want to or because it looks rigorous. Finding ways to grade faster gets more grades in the grade book with an immediate ROI because students can see them because on number four, I'm going to show you how that all kind of wraps up together. I have seen this combination of creating urgency, of paring down the amount of work that I need students to do th so that I'm making sure that what I'm giving them is quality over quantity it is having my grades in faster allows me to do a weekly reflection where almost all of my students grades are in by the end of the day friday and that even if you can't get that far done and we realize that that's somehow ridiculous for many classes but even if it's you're looking this week at last week you're giving students a chance to take a form to fill it out either online or in on in paper version and they're writing down things like, what did we learn this week? What did I, do I feel like I did well? What is my current grade in the class? And what assignments am I currently missing? Then at the end of the period, any, I let students know, if you are currently failing the class, so in my class, a 70 was the D minus, 69 was an F. If you have 69 or below, you have to get that paper signed by a parent or guardian, or if you're doing this in a form online, like a Google form, you would have students email that form to, the, to their parents, to their special education worker, and to themselves and to me, so that there is this correspondence that is already beginning where a student understands where they are, a parent understands where they are, the special education caseworker knows where they are. Everyone's on the same page and they're never getting to the end of the quarter or to right before progress reports where a kid doesn't know where they are. This is not about making a kid feel bad. It is holding up a mirror so that they understand, we all understand, 
exactly where a student is at any given moment. And actually, I'd love to give this to you for free. There's a link in the description below where you can just sign up. I'm going to give you my reflection sheet. You just download the PDF and, and start handing it out this week if you want to. Yeah, and that's completely for free. You can just find the link in the description below. Now look, is this going to solve all your problems in a heartbeat? Maybe not. But what we're doing here is moving the needle in the right direction to help you start getting closer and closer and closer to the teacher that you are called to be. You'll also find the link in the description below for the workshop. Please hit the thumbs up button and like this and all that other stuff because it just helps us to get to more people and share it with someone if you feel like somebody else could use this information. That's it, gang. See you next time. Peace.